Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to tell you guys why I went from being an AK guy over to being an AR guy. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Well, uh, it used to be that the AK-47 was my go-to gun. Um, and for the last several years, it's been the AR-15. Now, when I um, first started doing like tactical training about 10, 12 years ago, um, you know, I, I, I was training on both guns. And at some point early on, I made the decision that, um, you know, the AK was going to be my go-to gun, um, mostly based on um, stories of reliability, okay, uh, you know, that I was hearing from other people, everybody was saying the AK was a lot more reliable, um, and, you know, I could see that, you know, I had an AR that, yeah, it needed to be cleaned, you know, every 500 rounds or so, you know, AK, I could go 10,000 rounds, you know, without cleaning it. Um, in fact, my first AK, I went to about 10,000 rounds without cleaning it. Um, you know, so, so you know, I definitely saw the AK as being more reliable, and that's why I made it my go-to gun. Um, and then, you know, you know, here's the thing. Back then, um, all we had on the guns, you know, we, we had basically the iron sights, and we had a sling, okay? So, so that's basically all you had on the gun. You had your iron sights for aiming it, and then you had your sling, um, and basically I had, uh, well, uh, I, you know, we did have the collapsible stocks back then, right? You know, we weren't still using the wooden ones. We, we did have the collapsible stocks, and we did have uh, uh, plastic furniture up here, but um, but nobody was using uh, red dots. Um, I mean, I, I'm sorry, people were using them, but they weren't as common, okay? So, so my first AR, my first AK, I was using them with iron sights for a very long time. Um, and then what happened, uh, red dots started becoming very popular. Um, you know, I tried one out and I saw the, the benefit of having a red dot, um, you know, faster target acquisition. Um, you know, you can, you can aim in the dark basically, right? You know, as long as you can see your target, right? You know, you could, you know, you, you know, you could put the red dot on it and hit it, uh, with the iron sights. It can be a little, it can be almost impossible to see them at night. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, I immediately made the transition to the red dot, and that's when I started thinking, you know what, I think the AR is probably uh, the, the more practical gun. Um, so this is what this really comes down to. When I say, you know, why did I, you know, how did I go from being um, an AK guy to being an AR guy, what I'm talking about is um, the practical difference between these two guns, okay? You know, what is the thing that mattered that actually made me switch gears? Uh, and the thing that made me switch gears, is, more than anything, was the rails, okay? Um, with the AR, okay, with the AR, you know, you got the a lower and an upper, all right? That allows you to put the red dot on your upper, right? Which is a very stable platform. The barrel is attached to it. And then you have all this extra real estate here to put stuff on it, okay? Uh, with the AK, what I, what I realized is that, uh, you know, back then, if you wanted to mount a red dot, uh, the only real option, the only practical option was to put a side mount. Um, and it created a couple of problems, two problems, really. Uh, the first problem is that, that I can no longer get the, you know, the normal cheek weld because the red dot, the rail raised the red dot a little bit higher. So I had to actually get, you know, anchor my jaw to the gun, which meant that I needed to get some type of a stock riser um, so that my eyes would now get behind the gun. Um, and and, and I, I used the AK like that for a very long time. And then later on, I started finding out, uh, I started realizing that, that although I really didn't see a difference in accuracy when I was using iron sights, when I started using the red dot and started getting good with it, right? Um, you know, 12 years ago, I, I probably was, I was not as a good distance shooter as I am now uh, because of the additional practice I've had over the last 10, 12 years. Um, I've gotten a lot better at shooting at distance. Um, so with the, with the red dot, I could see that on the AR, I was a lot more accurate, okay, uh, versus a red dot on the AK. And then what I came to realize is that because the red dot was sitting on the uh, you know, on the side rail, you know, the side rail uh, was not as stable. So if you, if you push down on the side rail, if you, or if you push down on top of the, um, the red dot, the, um, you, know, the you know, basically the, the, the dot would move, you know, so, so it wasn't stable. So what I ended up doing was um, took this, got rid of side rail 
and uh, I mounted, you know, basically I mounted the red dot on top of the gas tube. Um, and with the red dot, you know, on top of the gas tube, which is basically clamped to the barrel, um, I'm, I'm seeing very similar accuracy between these two guns. So both guns now are, let's say, equally accurate, okay? Um, you know, and when I shoot, let's say, um, you know, I'll shoot 200 yards with this wasser right here. You know, I've hit three and a half inches at 200 yards, okay, which is, you know, below two MOA, um, which is what I will often hit, you know, with, uh, you know, with this uh, Palmetto, you know, I'll get uh, two MOA or better. So both guns are equally, equally accurate. Uh, accuracy is not the issue. Uh, recall is not the issue. Both guns are pretty, you know, have a, a fairly manageable recall. So recall is not the issue. Weight's not the issue. Both guns are about the same weight. AK is a little bit heavier. I think this one's about. Um, it used to be it used to be uh, six and a half pounds, but with the uh, the quad rail, it's now uh, probably the same weight as the uh, as the AK. They're both they're both at about uh, seven seven and a half pounds now. So the weight's not the issue. The issue is right. The big issue that I have found is with the AR-15. You know, you put your red dot here, and you have all this extra space to work with. There's, there's three things that you have to have on your go-to rifle, right? You have to have your sling, okay? You gotta have a red dot, okay? You gotta have a light, okay? Now, the, the AR gives you a lot of places to put, put, you put your light. You know, I can put this, anyway, I can put this on the side over here. Okay, so I can mount this up here. So really quickly, without running any pressure pads, right? If I want to get the light on there, I can get the light on there, okay? And now basically, I can I can work this rifle, okay? Um, if I want a more permanent situation, what I do is I can take the light off. And I can put it to this side, so it's even more out of my way. If I put it on the right side, now it's even more out of my way. And what I can do is now I can run a pressure pad on top. And that what that allows me is to, you know, put my hand further out and get a C-clamp on top of the on top of the gun. Okay, so now when I'm shooting the gun, if I'm shooting really fast, I can push down on the gun to offset uh, the minimal, you know, lift that an AR might have. And it's, it's almost nothing. Uh, but, yeah, you can get a C-clamp on top of it. So I've got all this extra space to work with. Um, now let's look at the AK. So same thing, uh, you know, we need we need three things. You know, we need a sling, you know, because sometimes we need to go hands-free. You know, so we got to have a sling. We got to have a red dot because it's just a proven technology that just works. Um, you know, you can shoot at night. You know, I can actually shoot better at distance. Um, you know, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm more accurate with it. I get faster target acquisition. So, so gotta have, gotta have that red dot. Um, the problem is that you can't put the red dot over here, so it's gotta go on top of the gas tube. Um, so problem is, first problem is I can't get a seat clamp on this. So the AK has a little bit more recoil, and it has the piston that's riding on top. So because you have this mass moving back and forth on top, when this fires, it wants to, you know that mass is coming back. It wants to lift a little bit more. So I would like to put a seat clamp on this, right? But you know, I mean, where am I going to put my hands? If I put it there, well, now I'm blocking my, I'm blocking my, my, my red dot. If I put it behind it, same deal. I'm blocking. So I can't get a C-clamp on this rifle in, in, you know, the way it's set up right now. So now I'm kind of forced to hold it like this. That's the only way I can hold it. Okay. And the things get even more confusing when I try to put a light on this. Um, so here's the thing. Where's that light? Oh, no, this guy. Okay, so we gotta have a sling, we gotta have a red dot, we gotta have a light. Where do I put the light? If I put the light over here, someplace over here, well now it's impossible for me to hold the gun. And basically the light is, is shining into the sling. So that's not gonna work. So what I, what I did is I got a rail on the side over here where I can mount the light. Okay. 
All right, so so the light has to be on the on, on the off side, right? It can't it can't be on your on your sling side. It's gotta be on the off side. Problem is now, I can't I you know I I have to run a pressure pad. I have to run a wire with a pressure pad over here, uh, because there's really no way I can I can I can hit that hit that button. Um, so I have to run the pressure pad on this, which means that you know it takes longer to set it up. You know if I'm moving the light from one rifle to the to another. You know, it's a lot easier to move this light from an AR to an AR than it is to go from an AK to an AK if it has to have a, a pressure pad. Now, I have seen some other systems where people have an offset out forward. Um, you know, I have not been able to find anything that will fit this rail system uh, because I don't have, um, you know, I don't have a, a Picatinny rail on top. Um, this particular system that I got, ha that's, it has an aim point base. Um, and I, I, you know, if you, it, the, the reason why I got the aim point base is because I have a co witness between the red dot and iron sights. So it had to, you know, only this base would allow for that co witness. Um, if you get a, a if you get a, a, a Picatinny rail on top, right, then what you're able to do is you're able to pull the, the red dot back a little bit and mount and, an, an, you know, put an offset light that will stick out over here that you can actually work with your thumb if you want. Uh, but the problem is, in that case, you lose your, you, you know, the, the rail is going to lift the red dot higher, all right, uh, which means you're not, you're going to lose your co-witness. Um, so I, I elected to, go to you know, to, to go with the co-witness. I didn't realize how much of a problem the light was going to be, but in hindsight, I, uh, I wish I got a, uh, a Picatinny rail um, so that I can mount an offset, offset light on the right side really quickly when I want to, when I want to do it. But this isn't terrible either. You know, basically, I got the light mounted on the side here, and I have to run a pressure pad. Now, I'm pretty good at shooting either way. So if I'm if I'm normally right-sided, and all of a sudden I get into a situation where I need to get the light on, you know, I'm pretty comfortable with switching and running the light like this. Okay, I'm com you know I'm comfortable with that. Some people are not going to be comfortable with that. Okay, so I'm comfortable running the gun like this. Um, you know, in, in, in a pinch. You know. Uh, switching it up like that, but um, but again, this is the reason or one you know why I went from being an AK guy over to being an AR-15 guy. Um, this this system is a lot more flexible. It allows you uh, more room to grow because you know you know what happens is later on I, I I decide to get into night vision equipment. Okay, so I got my light here. You know I, I can basically I can put you know I can I can run a light on the off side over here. I have room to run a pressure pad in the back, and I can put an IR illuminator in the front. And if you look at this, you know, where on earth am I going to put an IR illuminator on this? You know, there's, there's simply no space. You know, um, I'm left with no space. So, uh, you know, this is not something that I can grow into. You know, as 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 uh, new technology comes along, you know, I, I can't. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, there's no place to go now. A really simple easy solution that i wish uh, companies like palmetto would start employing is this this space over here is a waste of space that rear sight does not need to be there this should be a picatinny rail okay where you can mount your red dot over here right and then rear sight can go on the dust cover because dust co because basically the rear sight is just a backup at this point um you know so 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 rear sight can go on a dust cover red dot goes where the where the rear sight is right Red dot moves here, and now you've got rail space over here where you can mount an IR illuminator, or if you want to take a C clamp, you can take a C clamp. You know, because right now it's impossible to take a C clamp with this gun. I mean, there's you know without 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 um, you know without hindering your vision. There's just there's just no way to do it. Um, as opposed to this, you know, with this I can take a C clamp. You know, my my hand is not in the way. Um, so. Uh, but anyway, that's those are my thoughts on this. This is the practical difference between an AK-47 and an AR-15. Um, this is the only thing that counts, as far as I'm concerned. You know, they're both both guns are equally accurate. Both guns are equally light. Both guns have, you know, um, e you know, close enough power. Um, the, the both guns, you know, I mean, everything else is is close enough that it does not matter. But there's a limit. To what I can mount on that gun compared to this gun, you know, here I got a lot of space. 
you know, it doesn't matter whether you have a quad rail or if you have like a, you know, a, a free float that has like, a, you know, even if you have a free float that has um, like key mod or M lock or, you know, you can you can put rails wherever you need to put those rails and mount whatever you want to mount. Um, so, if you guys have any any anything you guys want to add to this, any comments, any ideas of your own, perhaps something I haven't thought about, please put in the comment section. And if you're not a member of the channel, please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.